Welcome to lesson four of our applique and ruching class. And today we're gonna to make some ruched flowers. But before we do that, I wanna show you one more technique on how you can make these leaves. And this one's a little more portable and it's with a glue stick. And you'll notice I have a silicone sheet laying over my uh, table today just because you can wash any glue off of it. So this is a good surface if you're gonna be using a glue stick. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the, this is the Soline glue stick. And so this one has got a, is narrow and works really good to just put some, some glue on the turn under allowance here all the way around. Now you remember that I showed you yesterday how we would take the tip and fold it over the edge. All right, now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna just add just a little bit more glue on the outside of that so I don't have to do it later. And so now I'm gonna fold in. Again, I'm starting on one side and working my way around the edge. This is good in front of the TV work. And since we have 40 leaves on this quilt, you can see how this will take just a little bit of time. All right, now I'm up here at the tip and again, I'm gonna fold that over and I've already put a dab of glue there to hold that. one finished leaf and I didn't have to use my iron. So that's another way that you can do. And then when you get ready to take out the freezer paper in here, and this is all dried, you'll just be able to pop off the edges of this fabric and pull that right out of there. So that's how you would do it if you want to use a glue stick to do your leaves. Once you get these glued, if you'll just let those lay for a while, uh, maybe an hour or two, and then you'll be able to come back and take all of the templates right out of the fabric. And now you have it all ready to stitch onto your uh, quilt block. Okay, the first thing we have to do to make our ruched flowers is pages four and five of your handout, and be sure to print out your handouts. Now that's where you'll find all the instructions and the patterns. And so I've printed it out. Now I just, uh, we need a seven inch circle. Uh, if you have a circle cutter, you could use that. I just laid my pattern on my fabric and used my rotary cutter and cut it out. The outside edge of this is gonna be turned to the back. So it isn't real critical that it be absolutely perfect uh, because we're gonna turn it under anyway. And so then once you do that, you wanna make a template of this part right here, that's the large double ruched flower. And I've made it two ways. Uh, in yesterday's class, I showed you that we could do it with the transparency film. So that's what I've done with this one. And I also cut one out of the heat resistant template plastic. So either ones of those will work. Now we are going to need a marker and so that this will show up really well for you, I'm going to do it with a really dark color. Uh, normally I would just use a, a pencil uh, that will give you a dark enough line and these lines aren't gonna show anyway, uh, but I'm gonna use the Frixion pen and once I get the stitching all done, I can just set my iron on it and get rid of all those lines and they'll all be gone. So I'm just gonna lay my template on my fabric and you don't need to do anything except hold it there. And I'm just gonna trace around the outside edge. Okay, so now I have the outside edge drawn. Now I need to draw the inside edge because this is a double ruche. So that means we're gonna have two rows of stitching. And so this one has a V point in every section. And you'll notice here on the outside edge, I left one out. There could be one right there, but it makes a bigger petal if you leave one out. Okay. 
There we go. Now we have our pattern all set to go. We're going to take a brief message from our sponsors and when we come back, I'm going to get the needles threaded up and we'll do some stitching. Nine Patch Fabrics has a wide variety of fabric, patterns, and notions. We offer quilt store quality fabric from manufacturers such as Moda, Robert Kaufman, Island Batik, and more. Nine Patch Fabrics also features a variety of notions including creative grids, rulers, sew line marking tools, and more. Visit Nine Patch Fabrics at ninepatchfabrics.com. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to thread our needle, and yesterday I didn't show you how this needle threader worked, but I'm going to do that today. I've cut me a fairly long, longer than to your elbow, uh, because this is going to get gathered up and you're going to want to use the tails later to sew it onto the background. So I'm going to lay the thread in the slot, the needle in the hole, and I'm just going to push on this lever. And when that needle moves, you're going to know that the thread just went through it. And when you pick it up, there's a little bitty loop right there for you to just pull the thread through and your needle is all threaded. I can't hardly do handwork anymore without using my needle threader. Saves a lot of time. Okay, so as a reminder now, we're going to put a knot in the end and I'm going to lay the tail on the needle. So I'm just going to lay it on there flat, grab it with my right hand, and now I'm going to twist three or four or five times. Depends on how thick your thread is. I'm using a 50 weight thread here. And there's my knot. And I always trim those as I go because I don't like to have to go back and do it at the very end. So I'm going to put my nail on the thread of the knot and we'll trim that off and we're all set to go. Okay, now, one of the things about this pattern is that the space between the tip of the point and the edge of the circle is, the, is what you need for turn under allowance. And that's because we want to make sure that we get it turned completely over and that the, um, the edges then of the flower will all be finished. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just fold it over from one point to the next. And I like to start on a flat side. Catching it in my un turn under allowance here on the back side. Now, I will tell you, doing ruching is not the place for you to try your tiniest stitches. The, uh, I'm going to take one stitch in place because I want to make sure that that holds when we start pulling on this fabric. Okay, so now I'm just going to take each of these sections should not take more than three or four stitches. So I'm going to go down and up. And do you see what a big stitch I'm taking there? And now I'm, I'm right there at the corner. And so now I'm going to stitch along this line. And again, I'm going to go down. I go, this is where you can use those quarter inch stitches. I've taught this to, to youngsters. And I can tell you, they do ruching very well because they automatically make bigger stitches than you or I do. All right, so now I'm ready to go. So what, I got four stitches along there. So now I'm going to take about three stitches on this V point. All right, now I'm at the top of the V, and the one thing that you want to make sure that you do is that you take your thread over the edge and come up. And what that's going to do, 
when we get ready to gather the threads up or gather the fabric up, it will pull that down to make that petal. Okay, so now my needle is on top and again I'm going to adjust and I'm going to fold under. You see how I'm folding under on the back side? So I'm going to fold it from to the next point and I'm ready now to stitch down this side. And again, we're just going to have uh, about three stitches and we'll be at the bottom. This is a piece of batik, and you'll want to make sure that you try to use a sharp needle, a, a, a needle called a sharp, um, because this is a little harder to stitch through by hand than some other fabrics might be. Okay, so I'm at the top, and I'm going to take over, I'm going to go over the top and come into the next side. Again, we'll turn the turn on under allowance under and I'm ready to go down the other end of the V. Okay, so now I've gone all the way around, and so you can see now it kind of looks like a, a hexagon. And the one thing we want to do is you don't want to do anything with your thread yet. I'm just going to take this a, one stitch and take the thread to the back of the work. And now I will uh, unthread that needle because I'm not going to use it for a while. But we actually will use this same thread when we get ready to sew it onto the quilt block itself. Okay, so that's the very first one. Uh, we're going to take just a short word from our sponsors. And when we come back, we'll stitch the inside and we'll finish up one flower. We'll be right back. Whether you're doing applique by hand or by machine, couching or ruching, YLI has the products to support your creativity. For needle turn applique, choose YLI Silk 100. It's so fine it just disappears into the fabric. And nothing feels like silk. Ask your local independent quilt shop or check out our website at YLICorp.com. Tracy's Tables has all of your custom sewing table needs. Visit Tracy'sTables.com to see the complete line of unique tables, carts, and shelves. And all of Tracy's Tables are made in the USA. Okay, so while you're away, I went ahead and started stitching on this center uh, ruching. And I did just like I started in the beginning. I put the knot on the back side, uh, took a stitch in place just to make sure that knot doesn't come loose. And then I'm now I'm just taking like three stitches on each V of the ruched center of this flower. You'll find this one's a lot easier to stitch because we're not using double fabric. And sometimes when this part folds over, you're doing three layers of fabric there on the back.
Okay, so I'm going to take my last stitch and I'm going to pull that thread to the back side. And now I can take my needle out. Okay, now do you want to see the fun happen? Because, oh, let's see, before I do anything else, I'm going to just press this to get rid of all those lines because I don't need them anymore. And I use the Frixion pen that comes out, disappears with heat. I laid out these fabrics here for you to be able to see uh, because I haven't made flowers out of any of the K facet fabric, but oh my gosh, I think these would make some beautiful flowers and would have a lot more color in them. So just try all kinds of different fabrics. You'll see that I usually use one that's kind of a modeled fabric. Uh, this one has two colors in it. So it's got kind of an orange in, and the yellows. Uh, this one is just a speckled fabric. And you'll notice I made these and they all still have the strings hanging on the back because I will eventually use those. All right, let's see if this is hot enough now to take away my lines. Perfect. So now all you see are my stitches. So let's take, first of all, the outside thread. And, and you will want to be careful when you start pulling on this um, and, and kind of work it forward. You see how I'm just using my fingers to slide it, the fabric right along the thread? I'll just keep moving those gathers forward. And so how a small do you make it? I'm going to pull this up until I have, here's my ruler, I want to make a three inch circle out of this flower. So the seven inch circle becomes a three inch circle. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to here's three inches and here's three inches. And so it looks like I've pulled that up just about enough now. And so now's the time for me to re-thread my needle because I will knot it off. So now that I'm comfortable that I've got this to be three inches, I'm just going to, right here in place where it ends, I'm just going to take a couple stitches to knot it off. And make a loop, come back up in that loop. Okay, and so now that will be enough to hold that. I won't have to do anything more with that except just even out the petals. Okay, so now I need to find my other thread again for the center. We're just going to pull on our thread and pull, gather up the section in the center. So again, we're going to just work those gathers around. And on this part, 
I'm going to pull it up until it, it fits around my two fingers. So again, we're going to thread our needle. So now again, we want to knot our thread off on the back side so everything, all the threads are underneath. And here's where the thread started. So let's just take a stitch in place. All right, and now we'll unthread the needle again. All right, so now we have this double ruched flower with this big cap in the middle. Now, you know how when a rose unfurls, you know, you end up with it real tight in the middle? So if you put your finger up in this cap and take a hold of the top of it, and so now I just want you to watch what happens when I twist the flower. Do you see how it looks like a rose actually opening up? So let me do that again. You're just going to take the cap, and now you're going to take the flower itself, and you're just going to twist. I'll get my fingers out of the way here so that you can see the flower unfurling. I'm going to go ahead and stick that pin in there because at this point we are ready to put this flower on the background. But I will tell you because my quilter, who uh, Irene Rising, who quilted this for me, told me that if I ever made one of these again, not to put the flowers on, until the machine quilting was done. She had to take every single petal on those flowers and pin them back out of the way so that she was able to get up and, and quilt close to the flowers. So if you're gonna do machine quilting or have somebody else do the machine quilting, they will thank you for not putting the flowers on just yet. We're gonna take a word from our sponsors and when we come back, I'm gonna show you how we sew it onto the quilt. I'm Amanda Murphy, and I'm a quilt and pattern designer. The Bernina Q16 is quilting magic. One of the hallmarks of a great quilting experience is when you lose yourself in your work. Bernina, made to create. The secret to every great project is great lighting. You can have beautiful fabric, the best threads, but if you can't see what you are sewing, we all know what will happen. Vivilux lights and lasers are the only lights made by quilters for quilters. Look for Vivilux lights and lasers at your favorite independent sewing and quilt shop or online. Okay, so I find it's easier if you hoop your fabric, your background. If you're going to sew, if you're going to sew them on before it's quilted. Um, and so I'm just going to put my hoop and let's see, let's get the at 10 o'clock. So it'll be out of the way if I'm you're right handed, you want it at 10 o'clock. Just because that's going to hold the background for you. And I'll tighten that up. Okay, so now I've got my needle thread re-threaded and I just took, I took one of the threads that I had on the back, the one for the outside edge, uh, and I, I trimmed off the one that we used for the inside. I just cut that one off. So I'm gonna put my flower right, and I'm just gonna, I've, I've just got that one pin but what we're going to do is we're going to come from the back of the fabric. Oh, I guess I have to go to the back because I'm on the top here. We're going to get your needle to the back. All right, so I'm going to start with this outside edge and I'm going to come up in the folds 
And so can you see my needle right there? I'm just going to come up in the fold and I'm going to take a stitch down. Now, if you're real careful, you can take your needle and come up in another fold. Use my thumb as a guide. And this is where you will want your thimble on because you're going to put, you're going to be pushing. And you might want to manipulate the, the petals just a little bit. So I came up in this one. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to go over a couple folds and come up again. And we're going to go down and we're going to go over a couple folds. And so you'll go all the way around and secure the edges first. And then I'm going to move my needle to the inside. Oh, see, I guess I want to go down there. So I would do the whole thing around the edges first. And so now I'm going to come over to the center and I'm going to try to come up right smack in the middle of this unfurling rose. See if I can hold it so you can see what I'm doing here. And now I'm just going to take a stitch in place and use my thimble to push because you're going through lots of fabric right there. All right, and so now I'm going to come and I'm going to do that some more right out here in the middle. Coming again, coming up in those folds. And going and going back down. And so really all I'm trying to do is secure this whole furl part here in the center. So now, if you've made one of these flowers and you want to do something that's really fun, if you'll take a, a piece of felt or a round circle of fabric, you could actually stitch this onto another fabric and put a pin on it. And now you have a pretty rose that you could use on your lapel, on your purse, on a hat, uh, any place that you might want to put some embellishment. So that's how we do this, the double ruche flower and how we sew it on. Now, when we get ready to do the smaller one, Again, I've just cut the circle and then I've made a template for the pattern. Uh, again, we would draw that on and you're, again, you're going to turn under, stitch on the lines uh, and pull it up. And again, this one too will have a cap in the middle when you get it all done, but it's not going to be nearly as big of a cap. And so I, I'm just going to show you on a couple of the ones I have done here. Let's get that needle out of here. Um, but you can see uh, that this is a double ruche flower. You've got one row here and the outside edge. But do you see how doing every other petal gives us a beautiful little petal on the edge? And again, you're just going to take the flower and you're going to twist it down until it looks like a rose that's unfurling. Okay, so I told you if you're going to have a machine quilted that you don't want to put your flowers on yet. If you're going to hand quilt it, you could go ahead and put your flowers on. If you're having it machine quilted and you're not putting your flowers on until it comes back from the quilter, then what you have to do is to stitch very carefully. You're going to, again, you're going to stitch in the folds, but you don't want to go all the way through the quilt. 
you're only going to attach these to the top layer of the quilt and because you've got bulk with the batting on the inside there would be no reason that you would need to put it in a hoop this is really just to keep the fabric from bunching up when you pull up that shouldn't happen if you've already had it quilted so regardless of whether you quilt it by hand and sew the flowers on now or machine quilt it have it quilted and then sew the flowers on later either way will work so now you know exactly how to make ruched flowers i want to thank you for joining us today and i want to remind you to go register for the giveaway we have some terrific prizes from our sponsors and those sponsors have provided a lot of this equipment everything from uh, the thimble the Soline pens, the Bernina sewing machine, the Vivilux lamps, the beautiful table that we get from Tracy's Tables. And one of you is going to win the cutting table that has three drawers in it. It's a great piece and it folds up so you only need about this much space to be able to store it. We, we've been using the Panasonic iron through the class and a lot of the notions have come from nine patch fabrics so be sure to go register because they've got some great prizes for you we have a very special offer from bernina of america if at the end of this program and within the the 30 days following that you decide that you want to buy a bernina machine any bernina machine or burnet that is of a thousand dollars or more you can get a $100 rebate. In the description of this class, you will find a link that will let you email me. You'll have to request the coupon to be able to do that. And after you've purchased your machine, you'll need to document where you bought it, uh, the date you bought it. Uh, it will have the date of this program on it so that they can make sure that it was within 30 days. And I will mail you a coupon from Bernina, and you'll need to complete that coupon and mail it directly to Bernina. It has nothing to do with your, your dealer. This is all a special reward from Bernina. And you'll get a $100 rebate back on your purchase. So if you like this Bernina 770 that I've been using or any other Bernina machine, go to your dealer test them out, test drive all of them because they all have different features. And this one is particularly made for quilters, but maybe you're a sewer and don't need all the bells and whistles this one has. Uh, I personally sew on the Bernina 880. I also have a 1650. So I've had Berninas for a long time. I am a Bernina brand ambassador, which lets me offer this rebate to you. So go check out those Bernina sewing machines. Send me an email and request the coupon. I'll be happy to mail it to you and you'll get $100 back directly from Bernina. While if you're watching us on YouTube, I want to encourage you to subscribe because every time we do a new video and put it on YouTube, you get a message. So you'll be the first ones to get to watch it. And if you're not a member of AQS, you know, we are the largest quilting organization in the world and lots of benefits, everything from discounts on everything that AQS does, whether it's entering our contests, whether it's attending our shows and your admission and any classes or lectures you want to attend and anything else that we sell throughout the year. So next week we will be putting a shark's tooth border on our quilt and I'm going to be working on just one block if you want to make the whole quilt like is hanging behind me you would need to go ahead and get four blocks finished and but you're still going to learn either way of how to make a shark's teeth border fit any quilt that you want to make so until then happy sewing and make some flowers